Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Troy, I'm bold and I collect watches. So, we're coming up to the end of 2020. This year I've grabbed as many watches as I could afford and I've nearly completed my first year or I probably have completed my first year in watch collecting. I had my first serious piece Christmas 2019 which will feature in a future video on the channel. It does feature in this state of the collection and that sort of was my gateway. It was the one that got me down the rabbit hole. So what can I say about this year? It's been tough for many people, but I've kind of kept my head down, looked at watches, made wish lists, you know, bought a few pieces, sold a few pieces, and it's been enjoyable. And it's nice to be part of this community, such a friendly community within the watch fam. And I thought it was only right to showcase my collection. So, do you know, I hope you enjoyed this video and I really, really hope you would pop me a like and a subscribe. That will really help the channel and leaves me nothing more to say, but I wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2021. The 2020 State of the Collection. So I'm probably coming up to just completing my first year collecting and it has been a massive haul. It's been basically buy what I like, sell what I don't. And this is what I've ended the year with. A couple of these will be what I would say pre-watch collecting days when I just wore watches for the sake of wearing watches didn't really have anything that I wanted to buy in particular because it was an automatic or sapphire glass. It wasn't any anything that drew me. I, I just had watches that I liked. Um, and a couple where they've got sentimental value. But this is basically my 2020 collection. So I'm going to start off with a couple from my pre-collecting days. This one here is an Oleg Cassini. And this one is a homage to Cartier Santos. As you can see, it's a quartz movement, Japanese movement. And I know exactly when this was purchased because on the back, to Troy, Love Mum 2000. So this was my millennium present from her. Oleg Cassini is actually a wedding dress designer so there is some lineage to that name not just let's pluck a fancy name like Filippo Loretti or anything like that and, and, and dash and sort of smash it on that dial. This one has actually got some lineage to it. So there's the Oleg Cassini. So I move that one out of the way. Again another one that was bought was a present. is the FUBU, for us, by us. That's what it means, hip hop fashion designer, hip hop apparel in the late 90s to 2000s. I used to wear a lot of their um, fashion wear. So I obviously had to have a watch to match. There it is. Another quartz movement in this one. This one's needing a new battery, which I don't really know how to do on this one. So I will tackle that in the new year. But as you can see, it's got like a steering wheel design. The logo on the glass, printed on the glass, which is a nice design, and it's and it's actually a see-through watch. So there we have that one. What else should I choose? Hey, uh, I think that's. Oh no, there's another pre-watch collecting watch, the Actim. This is a radio controlled watch. They make radio controlled clocks as well, um, syncing the time to the atomic clock. So accurate as hell. There is, let's have a look at the case back. There's some more information there. And if you can see it, Actim radio controlled. Just there, there we go. 
radio controlled. British micro brand. Oh, just not the camera. Sorry about that. And so, yeah, really happy with this one. Beautiful sunburst style. Nice symmetric dial. Wears really well. And that was bought for me as a present by my future mother-in-law. Let's see what else I have here. Uh, oh, another another pre-watch collecting buy. This one was bought from TK Maxx. I just bought it because I had a blue face and I needed a blue dialed watch to go with my suit for a business award. Um, this one scratched. It's not an expensive watch. I think it cost me about £60. Is quite a fashion watch. But I actually won an award for best business wearing this watch. So this will always, always stay in my collection just for the sentimental value. But again, that's that's where my expertise went. It was like, I need a blue watch to match my blue suit. And now this year I've learned about hacking, hand winding, jewels. I've learned so much. I've learned new brands like Orient. Never even heard of them before. Um, obviously the, the, the range of Seiko. So uh, yeah, this year has been fun. But this one, pre-watch collecting purchase. And it means... A lot to me because 10 years in business and I won best business so it meant meant a huge deal to me okay I think that's probably my pre watch collecting so if I was to say the purchase of watches here that is left on the table is watch collecting watches oh no 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 there we go right in front of me a Withings. This is a smart watch. And I think for a smart watch, it's very stylish. You usually get your little sub dial up here showing you your steps or tracking things like calories burned, drawing, training. There's the battery life down there. It's currently empty at the moment. Uh, it does need a charge because we spent four months of this year in lockdown. So the activity for me has been pretty much zero. So there's been no need to charge this one. So... I will get this one working again, but I just love the styling on that with the two dials and it doesn't really look, you know, like an Apple watch, just it's all screen. This, this has a nice dial, tells you the time. So it still kind of has that watch look to it. So that's why I like that one. Okay, we should go in for the next one. I think we will start with, let's go for the G-Shocks. Cassioke, an icon. Obviously, this was talked about loads in 2020, in the end of 2019. Making this such a talked about watch, would made this actually a limited watch to get hold of, selling above retail, especially the all black dial. But I managed to snag this one at retail, even when everyone was talking about it. So I was happy with that one. And I prefer this one than the all black and the all red, which was actually on both of those on sale at the same time. Um, I like the white indexes and probably I might look at modding this one. There are mod videos on YouTube where you can make this look more and more like a uh, Royal Oak by changing the housing strap and everything in metal. So there's my G-Shock. I will have all the model numbers popping up now um, on the screen. I can't, I'm one for just looks and probably the names. I try to remember as many model numbers as I can, but there's so many. But this one is the GA2100, I believe. But again, I will pop all the model numbers at the bottom of each watch. So yeah, my Cassie Oak. This one is my next G-Shock. Now this one means so much. This is the one my boy always takes to bed because it has a light. There you go. So he can wake up early to play his Fortnite. And he's always, before he goes to bed, Dad, where's my G-Shock? Where's my G-Shock? So it's technically going to be his, but obviously it sits in my watch box because it's actually my watch, but in his eyes it's his. So um, 
this one's going to stay with me forever. A lot of sentimental value to this G-Shock. And yeah, that little light is fantastic. I will have reviews coming up on all these watches. Um, so I can tell you more functions about them. Again, model number will be at the bottom. Should we stick with Casio? This is... Well, I was going to say this was a lockdown purchase, but pretty much a lot of these have been lockdown purchases because what a horrid year 2020 has been. Not that horrid, though, because I managed to delve more and more into the watch collecting hobby, which is a massive rabbit hole, but I'm enjoying it. And this is, again, another Casio. It's got a Luminox feel to it, but this was super, super cheap. And this is what I will wear when I'm just kicking about in the house, doing little odd jobs, which my partner will say I don't do that many. But when I do, um, I'll be wearing this one. Ah, as I look down, I actually forgot this one. My Avia Limited Edition. Now this one is an old watch, which I should have really said on my pre uh, watch collecting days it's had a new strap new crystal on there because it was really scratched by actually at a competition at work um, as best salesman i won some shopping vouchers and i purchased this watch along with other goods that day but this shows me that i was actually good at a, my job for the company i worked for so i'll always always now i'm on my own boss um, <laughs> I don't get many rewards, but, um, yeah, this one means a lot because it showed I was top salesperson. Okay. We were on the Casios, weren't we? I don't think I have. Ah, oh, yes, I do. Look at this one for a Casio. Now, how classy is that? My classy Casio day date. Again, model number will be at the bottom. But I bought this because I love the day on top, date at the bottom, and the silver sunburst style. Again, this is a good everyday watch, grab and go quartz. But for a Casio, which are usually renowned for doing their G-Shocks or cheap digital watches, made, made a really classy watch with this one. So again, Really happy with that one. And I'm happy with a lot of these, hence what I still make in the end of year collection. And I will pop a short reel of, of photos of watches that have been and gone. And that will be coming up soon. But there's that one. And again, model number will be at the bottom. Ah, wow, there's quite a few, isn't there? So let's just zoom out, see what we have left. See, we're getting down. It's quite a few. A couple of Seikos in there, some AliExpress purchases. So, talking about AliExpress, should we go into the AliExpress ones? This was my first AliExpress purchase. Proxima Great Wave off Kanagawa. Now, this is a full loomed dial. It's a homage to the 62 Mass. And it is a fantastic watch for, for the price I paid. It's got a Seiko NH35 movement. So it's got a Seiko movement in a non-Seiko watch. But, you know, you find that with a lot of micro brands. A lot of Chinese brands because it's a good movement. And this is a really, really good watch. What drew me to it was the dial. Uh, again, I will be having... A review of this one and every single watch coming up onto my channel if you were looking forward to seeing those just like and subscribe Cadison. now i call this one the black ice there will be a model number just popping up on your screen now but the black ice due to that what i would call frosted dial snowflake dial in black there it is 
fantastic dial. Great watch for the price. I upgraded the strap to this suede black and red suede strap. Seiko NH35 movement. Again, what a lot of watch for not a lot of money. I mean, it, this desk might have looked like I've spent quite a lot of money on watches. And, and I have and I haven't. I mean, a lot of them are cheap watches. Some of them run into the hundreds. Some are presents. But I, I used to collect, or I still kind of collect action figures. But I don't really have anywhere to display them. So I decided to sell them and, and put my money into the watches. Right. One Star King. Two Star Kings. High beat, automatic movement. With free postage from Poland, under £30 each in the AliExpress sale. I just had to buy them. Minimalist design. Which, underneath the design... The insides will knock the socks off any fashion brand. So there's the white one. Let me give the blue one a little clean. Get the fingerprints off. And there's a sunburst blue. Great watches for the price. Highly, highly recommend them if you are getting into watches to get yourself onto the automatics. Get yourself onto the AliExpress to experience it. Because you get a lot of watch for not a lot of money on there. It is a bit of a minefield. You do need to know what it is you're buying. Um, but that's what YouTube's for. There's loads of YouTubers telling you what to buy, what to stay away from. I can wholeheartedly say, go for these. Seriously, for the money. Fantastic watches. Uh, I know I've got some more AliExpresses. Like this one, the Pagani Design Chronograph. It's got this young hands sort of look and design to it. Look at the blue anti-reflective. This, for the money, is one of my favourite watches in the collection. I changed it to this brown rally strap. It comes with a metal strap. Model number at the bottom. Again, like I've said... Reviews for all of these watches come into the channel, so you've got to make sure to like and subscribe. Push the bell icon to be notified for every video that gets uploaded. Otherwise, you will be missing out. What else have we got? Um, let's go digital with this beast. The Timex Grid Shock. I bought this on Prime Day. Because it was a good deal. But it's too big. Let's compare it to say. A vintage in my collection. Oh not the camera again. I do apologise. Look at the difference. Look at that. So this one probably won't be staying in the collection. But I, as promised. On the unboxing there will be a review. Handy if you're a fitness fanatic. It's got things like a hydration alarm. Chronograph. Timer. Everything. So it's got it all. And it's shockproof, so very much like the Casio G-Shocks. So this will be, again, coming up on the channel. Model number at the bottom if you are interested. Actually, I might pop some links in the description if you do want to buy some of these watches. Um, they won't be affiliate links. I'm not affiliated with anyone. Um, or if you just want to read more about the watches. I'm going to be coming up to one that's dear to my heart now. My Belova Devil Diver. The 666. This was bought for me last year. By my fiance. And this is the one that started it all. It is such a great watch. Beautiful on the wrist. Always getting compliments when I wear this one. And you know you don't have to break the bank to have an expensive Swiss diver on the wrist. Obviously, we'd all like one on the wrist. We're all in this hobby. We all try to achieve our grails. And this will always have a special place in my heart because this is the one that sent me on this journey. So I thank her for that. Such a special watch. 
Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we've got to go with these two, haven't we? SKX 007, SKX 009. Not much to say about these, but in your first year of collecting, you have to, have to have these in your collection. I mean, there are homage watches to these, but you just to experience it, see what the hype's about, I do advise getting one for your collection. I bought these two in lockdown because, you know, I wanted to make myself happy. And I thought, you know what, what's the hype? I can see the hype again. There are obviously better watches out there, but I can see why people fall in love with that with these. They're simple and they work. They're iconic. So the 007 and 009, these model numbers, obviously I will know. This one I've put on a Bond style NATO. They did come with the rubber straps. Wasn't a fan of the rubber straps. And this one comes with my Kokota rally strap, which I actually nicked off the following piece. This one. The Seiko Mecha Quartz movement. The C01 version 2. I believe it is. It, I will put the model number at the bottom of the screen. Mechanical Quartz. Now a grail watch of mine is the Tag Heuer, uh, the Monaco. This has got very similar styling to it, obviously different colours, but it is my only panda in my collection. Again, another term I learned this year, panda, to me was a bear in 2019 and in 2020 it's a watch. So the weird and wonderful world of watch collecting, you find out all these terms. This is my partner's favourite one. When I say pick me a watch to wear today, she'll always say wear your panda. She won't call it the Gakota. She'll just say put your panda on. So even she knows. <laughs> um, right. Seiko Presage. Sorry, Presage Automatic. I call this my baby grand Seiko. Because of that snowflake textured dial. I'm a massive fan of textured dials. Saw this one on offer. Had to buy it. Lovely case size of 38. Display case back. Sign crown. What a beautiful watch. What a beautiful watch. There is another one that is in the collection. That unfortunately I couldn't put on show today and I couldn't actually wear it or add it to my collection even though I possess it because it was going to be my wedding watch and my wedding was cancelled due to Covid so that will be in my 2021 state of the collection and I will show you all. Um, I'll pop a little cutscene into what it is but not show you what it is Put in the comments below what you think it is inside the box. And yeah, I'll see if any of you are right. I'm not going to tell you if you're right. You'll have to wait for my 2021 unboxing. Or obviously, if I pull it on earlier with videos of my wedding day. Anyway, back to this. An exclusive. I wanted to add an exclusive to my collection. And some of them are silly money. This is... Less than 200 quid. Q Timex. One of the hottest watches of 2019 and 2020 in the um, Pepsi and Batman. And I went with the Hodinkee exclusive. Again, symmetrical dial. Something I really like. A no date dial. Drew me to this one. Price tag drew me to this one. This is a special watch in my collection. Another no date dial. The Richard Legrand Atlanticus. Look at the colour, that light blue, compressor diver. This blue, you know, I've not seen anything like it. Some colours it'll go like an ice white, sometimes it'll go a deeper blue. This I don't think will ever leave the collection because it just looks amazing. Again, I draw loads of compliments on, on, on this watch. So what about a style of watch I like? I think it's safe to say... Date Justs. My favourite style of watch. 
So it's going to be a grail piece for sure. This is a Talisman Quartz. Needs a battery change on that. Bought that in a bundle of watches. The bundle of watches I just stripped just to learn how to sort of do battery changes, strap changes and tinker. But I kept this one because it was the cleanest in the collection and a style of watch I liked. The first Datejust homage, the Seiko 5. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful watch for a Seiko 5? I don't think this will ever leave the collection, you know. I love it. Love it is a great little piece. Or if it does, I'll just keep this one instead, which is a slightly smaller case design. The Timex. With Indie Glow. Look at that. A date just with Indie Glow. Obviously it's not a date just. On the wrist and far away. If you don't know watches, it might look like it, but that's not what I wear it for. I just like the fluted bezel. I love the Jubilee bracelet, the two-tone. Um, something I just thought I would never would. But I'm obviously, obviously like a magpie to these, and I get drawn to them. I can see time's drawing on, so I'm sure you don't want to stay here all day watching my unboxing. I don't even know how many I've got. Calculate them at the end, guys. Pop in the comments. I'm not going to count them. Vintage. Drymex Mechanical Handwound, Onoga Kota Perlon, Cheap, Cheerful, and I think my only really, probably is the oldest watch in the collection, not one I've owned, but the oldest when manufactured. There you go. Drymex 17 Jewels, Full Lever. Don't know the history of this watch. If anyone knows anything about this brand or this watch in particular, please pop a, something in the comments. Seiko. No, I'm gonna leave the Seikos for last. No, I've already done the Presage. Let's let's do some more Seikos. The Dress KX. Seiko 5. I went for the black and gold dial. Didn't come with a very nice strap, so I added this NATO strap to it, which I think, you know really goes with this watch review will be on the channel model numbers will be down here obviously for all the watches but look at that beauty love it love it love watches and i know if you're watching this video you guys do too uh, let's go cheap and cheerful timex expedition special little piece in my collection was in one of my first unboxing videos along with the Timex Grid Shock you saw earlier and the Invicta Pro Diver. But let's go back to this expedition with his Indie Glow. Don't know if you'll see it. There it is. Great little tool watch, great little field watch. And what a, what a steal I had on this. This one ticks really loud, really, really loud. But I can get past that. It's such a great little watch. Look at this. Lovely signed case back. Nice thick canvas strap, eligible field dial, overall fantastic little watch. Let me bring what we have left. The Seikos and a Citizen. But there's, there's the Invicta Pro Diver. I'm not one for Submariner homages because it's such, such an iconic, iconic design. Um, I didn't buy this because I like the design. I bought it because what was in Victor 2020, I learned new terms, <laughs> lockdowns, hand sanitized, social distance. <laughs> I think we've all learned those new terms, but then I learned another new name, Invicta. Who were Invicta? Going online, I was seeing watches which were marked down from £800 to under. 150 pounds i'm like wow this is good looking deeper i just saw it as a marketing strategy but this one i think it was all over youtube singing its praises or criticizing it and i had to add it to my collection a review will be coming online and i'll tell you my thoughts on it this probably won't stay in the collection or it will, I'm still not convinced. Maybe, it, this is technically 
no, no, maybe it would stay because this is technically the first watch I unboxed on the channel. And it'll probably only stay because of that. Won't get no wrist time probably, but you'll see why in the review. So make sure you're subscribed. Citizen. This is a heavy piece. One of my biggest pieces. Why'd I buy it? Because I didn't have an all black watch. It came on a rubber strap, which was horrible. So I upgraded it to this metal strap, which just added to the tool function of this watch. Again, model number will be shown below, but that black and orange is phenomenal. It's such a good color combination. Automatic movement, I think is an 8200 movement. I will pop it all in the description. Let's straighten that bezel. There you go, look. But yeah, great watch. And again, I had that as a, at a good price. The latest purchase. My Citizen Eco Drive, my first Eco Drive. There is an unboxing video, if I just show you up there, where I found out this wasn't the watch I actually purchased. So that was quite funny. But all in all, a good watch, comfortable watch because of the strap design and lug design. And again, review coming up later on the channel. And model number here at the bottom. Trying to get that in focus, that dial there. Look at that, another textured dial. So you'll see a pattern coming on. This is what watch collecting is about. You know, you, you kind of discover new things you like. You kind of discover a pattern. As you see, I like my date justs and I like my, obviously my Seikos and I like my textured dials. I'm talking of texture, a fantastic piece. Again, Spinnaker, I never really heard of Spinnaker until this year. But they make some fantastic dive watches, all with Seiko movements um, or Myota movements. But this is the Spinnaker Croft. I know that because this is one of the favorite ones in my collection. Look at that dial. Try and get it in. There you go. And if you go onto the Spinnaker website or anywhere online looking at Spinnaker, you will see their dive watch orientated. A lot of them have textured dials. This is a thick piece, but it wears really well. And I added it to this brown NATO stripe strap. Sorry, happy with this one as well. Now, rarest hen's teeth, I believe this one. I've not really seen this watch anywhere. Model number will be coming at the bottom. This one, when I put on Instagram, I'm always being asked, what is it? What was the model number? You know, it's it's very popular on social media. It's obviously a pilot's watch. Don't ask me what the functions are. Obviously, I would use an alarm. I'd use the time, maybe world time. But I believe on here you can check the petrol in the tank of your plane and all these crazy things. So I will be learning more about this watch this year. One of the earlier purchases in my collection. Probably will never sell this because this is such a talking piece. And because it's one of my earlier pieces, it still holds that sort of sentimental value of my early my, my, my early path in my journey of watch collecting. What do you think of this? It's kind of like a any digi flight master but i love that one and then my recent purchases of my seikos these there is a video unboxing all of these of how i spent my swiss watch money on these seikos you have the seiko samurai model number coming up we have the Seiko Samurai Save the Ocean again. Model number will be coming up. Save the Ocean because of the dial. And they do a lot of charity work, Seiko, with various marine life charities. And this is part of the collaboration. 
Then I added another Save the Ocean, but not in a samurai, in a turtle. I love this one. I love this one. I love the turtle case. There you go. Let's get it into focus. Beautiful piece. Again, if you want to see the unboxing, go up, follow that link. Again, all reviews for every single watch will be coming online. Like and subscribe. I'll tell you what I think of these watches. I'm going to be biased because these watches are in my personal collection. Um, no one's been sending me in any for review or or anything like that. So I might be a bit biased, but I will obviously tell you what I don't like about the watches in particular. They're not all perfect, um, but they all do hold a, a dear place in my heart because these are the watches that made the end of 2020. And last but not least, Seiko Monster, fourth generation. Model number will be popping up on screen. And there you have it. There's all my watches. State of the collection 2021. Uh, sorry, I'm going ahead of myself. Of course, we all want to see the back of back end of 2020, but we're not there yet. Hang in there, guys, and thanks for watching.